in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Friday, the 4th of October, 2024, 26th week in Ordinary Time. And today, we keep the memorial of St. Francis of Assisi, born in 1181 and died in 1226. Francis was the son of a prosperous cloth merchant in Assisi. When his father objected to having his goods sold without his consent to pay for the restoration of a church, the bishop commanded Francis to repay the money. He did. He also renounced his father and gave back everything he had ever been given, even his garments. He began a life of perfect evangelical poverty, living by begging, and even then only accepting the worst food that people had to give. He preached to all the love of God and the love of the created world because having renounced everything, he celebrated everything he received or even saw or heard as a gift. A rich man sold everything and joined him in living next to a leper colony. A canon from a neighboring church gave up his position and joined them also. They looked into the gospel and saw the story of the rich young man whom Jesus told to sell everything. They saw Jesus telling his disciples to take nothing with them on their journey. They saw Jesus saying that the followers must also carry their cross. And on that basis, they founded an order. Francis came to this city of Rome himself and persuaded the Pope to sanction it, though it must have seemed at once impractical and subversive to set thousands of men, however holy, wandering painlessly round the towns and villages of Europe. Because Francis was wearing an old brown garment begged from a peasant, tied round the middle with string, that became the Franciscan habit. Ten years later, 5,000 men were wearing it. A hundred years later, Dante was buried in it because it was more glorious than cloth of gold. There is too much to say about Francis to fit in our weekday devotions. He tried to convert the Muslims or at least to attend martyrdom in doing so. He started the practice of setting up a crib in church to celebrate the nativity. Francis died in 1226, having started a revolution. The Franciscans endure to this day. And our present Pope, Francis, took the name of this saint because he has the intention of revolutionizing the church he has the intention of attending to the poor just like Francis did. To this day, we have so many Franciscans in the world, but of course, the major ones are the Friar Miners. The OFM Capuchins, OFM Conventions, and the Poor Clares, they all belong to the big Franciscan family. We also include the secular Franciscan order of the tertiary of St. Francis. In Zambia, we call them Tereshadis. The tertiary of St. Francis, that is the third order of the Franciscans. We also include other families that have derived their spirituality from St. Francis. Little sisters of St. Francis. Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi. We pray for them today. We pray for the universal church. That the whole church 
may draw the spirituality of this man to attend to the needs of the poor. That the gap that is there between the poor and the rich may be reduced. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following deliberate members. Agatha Mweti celebrating her birthday today from Ochiwarongo, Namibia, text for us the first reading. Anne Ndirangu celebrating her birthday today from Nairobi, Kenya, text for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father James Kamodo who celebrates his birthday today from Nakuru Diocese in Kenya. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift St. Francis was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis' steps, we may follow your Son and through joyful charity come to be united with you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. Have you ever commanded the morning and entered into the springs of the sea? A reading from the book of Job. Job chapter 38, verse 1, 12 to 21, and chapter 40, verse 3 to 5. The Lord answered Job, out of the whirlwind. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal and it is dyed like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare if you know all this. Where is the way to the dwelling of light and where is the place of darkness that you may take it to its territory? and that you may descend the paths to its home? You know, for you were born then, and the number of your days is great. Then Job answered the Lord, Behold, I am of small account. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand on my mouth. I have spoken once, and I will not answer twice, but I will proceed no further. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Psalm 139, 1 to 3, 7 to 8, 9 to 10, 13 to 14 AB. Response is taken from Psalm 139, verse 24B. And the response is, lead me, Lord in the way everlasting. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. O oh Lord, you search me and you know me. You yourself know my resting and my rising. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. You know all my ways through and through. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. Oh, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your face? If I climb the heavens, you are there. If I lie in the grave, you are there. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. If I take the wings of the dawn, or dwell at the sea's farthest end, even there your hand would lead me. Your right hand would hold me fast. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. For it was you who formed my inmost being, knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you who wonderfully made me. How wonderful are your works. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. Gospel Acclamations, Psalms chapter 97, verse 7d and 8a.
Today, harden not your heart, but listen to the voice of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. At that time, Jesus said, Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethesda. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to heads. He who hears you, hears me. And he who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many people who have uh, spoken about the book of Job and even used it to encourage others, try to tell them, you know, you should be like Job. Job suffered, but he never complained. Who told you? It means you have never read the book of Job. Because if you read the book in full, you will understand that Job even regretted the day he was born. You will understand that Job even questioned God. His suffering was too much that he even questioned God. Like saying, you know what? You made a mistake. I think you went wrong. I think you don't know what you are doing, my God. And we have done that so often. We are not different from Job. We have questioned God in those moments we found ourselves in pain, in frustrations, in disappointment, in brokenness. We have questioned God in those moments we found ourselves losing a job, losing a relationship we thought was permanent, having our interviews done and thinking that we are getting that job just to receive the news that you are not getting the employment. And we question God, where are you? What are you doing? Why me? And today we listen to God now speaking. After Job had exhausted his complaints, after Job had exhausted his questions, God now spoke up. And told him in chapter 38, Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? Just ending here is enough for us to know that our God is a God of order. We don't know how he operates things. We don't know how he makes the rain fall. The meteorologist can only predict whether it's going to rain or it's not going to rain. But it is God who makes it rain. The floods, they can be predicted by scientists. Even the earthquake can be predicted by scientists. But it is not in their hands to decide when it should be and when it should not be. God tells Job, you know, I am in charge of the world. I know what I am doing. I'm in charge of you as well. I know what I am doing. Do not think that I am not seeing what you are going through. I know what I am doing. God will never test us beyond our strength. God will never allow us to go through something that we cannot bear. And he knows why we have to go through that. There are lessons we have to learn. And the lessons are going to be unfolded tomorrow when we conclude the book of Job. The gospel passage of today talks about the sending of the 70. After Jesus had sent those 70 in some other passages, they say 72. He remained now reflecting on his ministry and how it looked like a failure because a number of those 
who were preached to did not accept the message. And so he says, what to you, Corazin? What to you, Bethsaida? For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, the pagan land, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth. But it shall be more tolerable for the pagan land than the land that has received the word of God. It is more tolerable for people who don't know God than people who know God when it comes to living a life worthy of the gospel. Because we are supposed to live a life different from those who have not heard the gospel. If we are not doing that, then we are not ambassadors for Christ. There must be something different about the way we live our lives. Even when we are broken, even in times of frustrations, our reactions should be different from those who have known Christ. That's exactly the determining factor that we are not like Bethsaida. We are not like Corazin. We are not like Capernaum. We are different because we listen to God's word and act on it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Friday to you, and happy memorial of St. Francis of Assisi. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.